Hey everybody and happy record store day. I'm here with my pickups today and I had a pretty good record store day. I went down to my local record shops and it was packed. It was crazy. It's probably like an hour wait just to check out. It had some really cool stuff. They got some cool stuff but I'm a cheap ass so I didn't get any of the new releases unfortunately but I almost picked up the uh, the Jimi Hendrix and Curtis Knight one where he's uh, well, like his earlier stuff before he was even in the experience and I also almost picked up uh, the Max's Kansas City but I also decided just not to pick that up. But anyway, I did get some awesome stuff though, and I'll show you. But yeah, great. Uh, my one record store, they they they're the ones that get the actual releases, and they got the, they got pretty pretty good amount of stuff. Like they had about uh, four or five different shelves of just different stuff. Just nothing expect nothing really caught my eye. I was kind of looking forward to the uh, the Ico something release, but my store didn't get it. It's like some weird Japanese surf James Bond music, and I thought that looked pretty interesting. It probably would have been cheap, but hey, my store didn't get it. What can you do? And the other store I went to, which is uh, sweet, they actually had half off, which is amazing deal. I didn't get that. I only got one thing though, but nonetheless, still a great deal. Definitely worth checking out. Anyway, uh, let's get on with it. Uh, my first one I got here is a brand new record, and yeah, it was actually a pretty good price. It was twenty bucks, and that is the New York Dolls, self-titled, nineteen seventy-three, I believe, debut. Really cool. I remember when I was uh, when I was a kid, I had a Guitar World uh, issue that. Had a big interview with a lot of the living New York Dolls guys. That would have been early 2000s. I think right around when they reformed or something, I think. I think they reformed around there. But either way, I uh, had a big interview and I was always kind of curious about them, but I never got a chance to hear them. I never looked them up you know, not too long ago. And they're pretty cool. It's uh, early punk, definitely rock and roll inspired. You know, pre-punk, if you want to call it. Cool album, though. Definitely dig it. Some great tunes on here, like uh, Jet Boy. And I think, yeah, and Pills has a fantastic harmonica on it. It's funny enough, I didn't expect some uh, harmonica on this. Looking for a Kiss was pretty damn good. I definitely uh, recommend this. Really cool. And, you know, it was uh, 20 bucks. That's pretty good for a reissue. I like that. I wish more around that price instead of like 40 and 50 Those are Canadian prices, but, you know, still, it's outrageous. Next we have, this is the one I got at the other record store, I got this for five bucks. And I actually saw this on a different channel, I forget who it was, but you know, it's that's one of the best things about the VC is, you know, finding out about different records that you see that, you know, you normally wouldn't pick up. And this one, as soon as I saw the person bring it up, I was like, I saw that in my store, I'm going to go get it next time I'm there. And luckily they had it, and that's The Waitresses, it's called, uh, Wasn't Tomorrow Wonderful. I really like that title. I forgot it, but I still really like it, so... Yeah, I just like the idea of it. Reminiscing about something that hasn't happened yet. Man in the back. Apparently she died at the age of 40 from lung cancer, which really sucks. I got it, it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, uh, comes with the original sleeve with the lyrics on it. Nice little pattern, kind of like a quilt or a tablecloth. Really cool album, though. They are, These guys are known for... Uh, I know what boys like, but these guys, like... Are really good though, like they kind of have a B-52's uh, Talking Heads kind of a style with kind of funk based you know, funk based post-punk kind of sound, really really cool though, definitely worth checking out like you know, if you, if you don't like that one song, just forget about it and check check this out, it's definitely worth definitely worth it very cool band and this is the, uh, this is an original Canadian pressing, and yeah and that obviously, the last record wasn't an original pressing, but yeah, original Canadian pressing very good. I like that cover too, with the uh, the graduating high school look. Definitely, definitely worth it, especially for five bucks, you know. Next, we have another artist I'm always looking for and excited to find, and that is Lou Reed, and that is new Lou that and that is Lou Reed's new sensations. I picked this up. Uh, it was it was it was like ten bucks, so I had to do it. And you know, I don't see Lou Reed around enough. I figured it was one of his 80s ones, just by the cover, and he's holding an Atari controller. Yeah, uh, it's it's okay. It could be a lot better. They overproduce, like, the crap out of it. Like, this album does not need all the extra, like, synths and, like, the big drums and the big guitar sound. It would have been way better if it was just, like, a Lou Reed and his guitar. Like, s subtle backing. There's definitely a couple good tracks on here, though. Like, doing the things that we want to was pretty good. But, uh, also... This second side is way, way better than the side A. Side A really suffers from the overproduction where side B kind of sits sits through it. Definitely good tracks in there. But uh, 
far from my favorite Lou Reed. Yeah, ten bucks, so not not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. And last but certainly not least, this was a fantastic album. Really excited about this one. I saw it. I recognized it from Frank Zappa because he had a different album titled this. But then, it's, and I also recognized the one uh, the one drummer from it. And then I was like, oh, I gotta get this. It was it was a little bit more than uh, I thought it was. Then I thought it was worth it at, at, at the time. But once I listened to it, I was dead wrong because this album is fantastic. And that is Ruben and the Jets for real. There's the uh, drummer from the early Mothers of Invention. Yeah, I guess uh, if you don't know about Ruben and the Jets, Cruising is Ruben and the Jets. It's a Frank's album, out uh, Frank Zapp album that came out in 1968, I believe, and it was like a, a concept duet album, like a band about a duet band from the 50s. And then apparently uh, at one point, uh, Ruben, this guy here, actually, like you know, he, he met Frank Zapp and told him, you know, his, his name's Ruben and he used to, his name was Ruben and he used to front a similar band, and he actually gave him the uh, the ability gave him the like legal right or whatever to use the name Ruben and the Jets and he ended up releasing two albums and you know he even used some of the same artists and stuff and Zappa produced this too actually which is really cool and just it's just a fantastic album with that kind of uh, you know like Motown kind of like early 60s vibe nice gatefold of them eating at a burger joint it's also a, a Zappa song on here uh, if I could only be your love again which was uh, arranged and written by him, but performed by these guys. It, it, is, it is so good. This whole album is just fantastic all the way through. There's a couple covers, like, dedicated to the one I love, and uh, that's another one that was... Uh, I think All Night Long was the other cover, but yeah, just really good stuff. Could not recommend this more. It, even if you don't like Frank Zappa, check this out. It's definitely the most... Well, it's, it's, not, it's not Frank Zappa, right? It's... There's Frank Zappa things in it, but it's not Frank Zappa. It's so good, though. It is definitely recommended. Definitely recommended. Yeah, really dig this album. I've been listening to it a lot lately. But I'm just repeating myself at this point. It is also original Canadian, original Canadian pressing. There is only the one pressing for, uh, like, everywhere. So it must be somewhat rare. I'm not sure. Uh, let me know if you know. But yeah, that's that's what I got. Ooh, uh, one other quick thing. When I was uh, after you check out, um, my, my one record store likes to give uh, some freebies and stuff. And I got a couple free CDs. It's uh, we got On the Highway, 15 tracks of the month's best music featuring Chris Forth and the Solar Motel Band, The Coral, Richmond Fontaine, Aziza Brahim, Grant Lee Phillips, White Denim, Charles Bradley, M. Ward, Kieran Leonard, Myler Jones, Bob Mould, and more. And this one is... 14 tracks of the best new music. Lit Uncut Shake, featuring Mogwai, Kevin Moby, Konono No. 1, Bambino, Graham Nash, the Jayhawks, the Jayhawks, Sturgill Simpsons, Laura Gibson, Woods, Kate Laban, Andrew Bird, Bitchin' Bajas, and Bonnie Prince Billy, Ben Wad, and Tim Heckler. Yeah, these are always cool, just to find out about some, just to find out about some new music. Because I've been kind of craving about getting in some new bands. I was looking at some of the different uh, LPs and stuff, the new ones that they have at the store. It's like, I kind of want to check out one of these bands. It's just nothing quite, quite, uh, quite, uh, spe quite sparked my interest. But uh, I definitely want to get into some new bands. So if you guys have any uh, ideas out there, just, you know, any ideas of bands I like that are new, you know, let me know and I'll definitely go check them out. Anyway, that's the video. I had a great record store day. Hope you guys did too. Thanks for watching. Please like, com like, comment, and subscribe and all that awesome stuff. And have a good one.